we have about a quarter of an hour for the debate, so we have time for some, please, short questions from the audience and short answers. So let's start, and I don't see who would like to start from the audience. My name is Ibtisam al Kitbi. I am the head of Emirates Policy Center in Abu Dhabi. Uh, this competition between China and uh, United States has been discussed in um, Bratislava, Global Sec, uh, Security Conference. And there were two European, the Eastern European and the Western European. The debate was that, well, uh, when it comes to money, United States does not give money. Does, does not give any importance for Eastern Europe. And they, if they ask to see the president, they've never been uh, give the chance. While China comes with the money and whatever they will ask, they will uh, be given. Same in the Gulf. Now, we have the same dilemma. United States wants also uh, nowadays, of course, with the new alignment that uh, we give everything, but United States are not giving, are not going to give anything. And they're asking us to uh, leave China. Now, this is the dilemma. While you have your economy, the Chinese are able to help, but the American are not willing to help in terms of economy, even with the protection, military protection, the American are moving away from the region. So the question now, if we are the Western European, the Gulf is to choose between these two, this is also the question to be debated. Thank you. Uh, Eastern Europe was addressed, so Bogdan and America was addressed <laughs> for you. Okay, Bogdan, you start. With and let's pleasure. Thank you very much for this question because it is uh, important to underline this uh, difference between the approach of the United States and the European Union towards <coughs> China. We say in Europe uh, that uh, China is a challenge when uh, Russia is a threat. And uh, uh, there is a difference with, for example, this opinion that was introduced into the national security strategy of the United States from 2018. And the specific, uh, uh, the specific challenge for the countries of Central Europe, <coughs> this is the format 16 plus 1, now 15 plus 1, after the decision of Lithuanian government to withdraw from this format 16 plus 1, that country, and after, you know, the confrontation with China that was uh, against the involvement of, uh, uh, of Taiwan uh, in the relationship with uh, Lithuania. Majority of countries uh, uh, from Central Europe uh, decided to weaken, to weaken the relations with uh, China, not to go uh, uh, as far as President, uh, as Prime Minister Viktor Orban from Hungary did, uh, in involving its country and its economy in the full cooperation with China, with the presence of banks uh, and uh, Chinese capital, instead of. Uh, many other European uh, partners. So uh, within the European Union, we try to have the common uh, approach to China, although uh, I tried to describe, you know, you. those two, uh, let's say, uh, different positions, uh, one of Lithuania's government and the other of Hungarian's government as well. Okay, thank you. Jean-Claude. Uh, before being leading a think tank in Washington and participating Another one, I was for many years, as some of you know, a banker and I worked for Citibank. And uh, between 2010 and 2014, I was based in New York and I was covering the emerging markets and talking to companies and seeing how we can help in providing banking services around the world. And I visited many countries like Pakistan, Algeria, Central America, and everywhere, surprisingly, surprisingly, Chinese construction companies were often the clients of Citibank. Where were they the clients of Citibank? 
for a very good reason. They didn't want to deal with the local banks, who often were not well organized, corrupted. They didn't want to work with the Europeans, often because they were representing the old colonial powers. And they were willing to work with us because we were the, the alternative. Not the alternative of choice, but the alternative of choice or non-choice of the other one. Having said that, I, I remember very well some conversation. And the conversation was as such. How's the business? And the people were saying, well, Chinese companies come. They are very aggressive on the commercial side. They offer us some very attractive terms. So we give them the contract. And then the problem starts. The problem is delays. The problem is cost overrun. And the problem is the fact that they don't create jobs because they bring their workers. And once the contract is over, they take back the workers. And at the end of the day, you end up in a situation where you didn't get what you wanted. You paid too much for it. You get into some debt. Look at what happened in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Malaysia, uh, it's a very good example. Malaysia was part of this bridge and road project for China. And ultimately, they pulled back. Mm -hmm. And that happened with other countries. There's one Thank sentence. you. Uh, one sentence. Anna and then Saki. I think that we Europeans, and in this case, you from the Gulf, we cannot be so self-flagellating. Yes, it is true that uh, in, our, in our cooperation, there are strings attached. In our side, it's always <coughs> human rights and so. But what, what we, we have to remind our partners in Africa, all over the world, is that China has strings attached, not just bringing bringing workers, is that normally there is a barter exchange. I build this, this, I mean, this stadium, and you give me the, the product of this mine. And this is what is behind. We are seeing how in Ceylon, in Sri Lanka, and in other places, they have taken hold of just ports, big, big infrastructures in exchange for, uh, for loans or for money. So, Again, we have a lot of issues, but with China, we have to be very clear cut as well that it's not just giving money, no strings attached. They don't give money, and there are strings that in the end are even, I mean, even more difficult to face than the ones that we from the start put on the table. Thank you, Thank you Anna. I may ask uh, Wang Yixi in a moment, but Saki, you have yeah, the next. Uh, from a European perspective, uh, the way we deal with China is, in my view, quite uh, smart. In a sense that we have, in our uh, strategy, uh, defined our position vis-à-vis -vis China as a partner, a competitor, and a strategic rival. Okay? And uh, nobody mentioned the fact that the, that's exactly at least officially, the position which had been adopted by the new ad American administration. It's exactly the same, same. wording. I'm not saying that uh, the policy conducted is along those lines necessarily, but the way we, uh, we behave vis-a-vis -vis China is uh, hedging in a smart way. There are areas in which we have to cooperate with China. It's indispensable and very important for the international order. Uh, climate change is a very important issue. Uh, even uh, the GCPOA is an important issue. And the Chinese are playing a positive role in this, uh, in this area. Now, we have divergences. And from the discussion we had, with the Chinese counterpart, uh, they said, yeah, uh, we, we are, we are uh, partners, but we are not rivals. So please drop the idea of rivals. No, no, there is a rivalry with China, because in terms of value, there are strong differences. And even in terms of interest, there are strong differences. And my personal view is concerning the 60 plus one. My, um, personally, I will prefer to have all members of the European Union yeah, being within the European Union when they talk to, to China. There is no need to have a sub-specific uh, uh, sub-system of uh, relation
between Europe and, uh, and, and, and China. Thank you very much. Uh, Yezi, would you like to comment on uh, China's policy vis-à-vis -vis the European Union and the U.S. in this context? Uh, yes. Uh, I think the Chinese approach to Europe is different from its approach to state. In Chinese eyes, uh, the United States is a major problem and Europe is a less, less of a problem. But they are, they are going to eat each other in denouncing China's human rights uh, And some European powers even uh, joined the United States and was in uh, uh, doing some military acts in, in the South, in South China Sea. And as we see, uh, some European countries are getting closer to I want them before, and these actions uh, alienated Europe from from China. Uh, but I, my point is, China is not as angry uh, to Europeans as to as to the Indian Americans. Uh, it actually, the strategy to put it in place is to drive a wedge between the European Union and the United States. But whether they do so or not. I'm not too sure. Uh, on the one hand, China's actions are not so much assertive or aggressive. China's words, especially, is very much uh, assertive and aggressive. That, that those rhetorics uh, are catering for China's domestic audiences, but difficult to distinguish uh, uh, between China's domestic. Uh, purposes and it's a uh, uh, international propaganda. So this is the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Unf unfortunately, time is up and the chairman uh, reminds me that we should stick to the time because there are more events to follow. So first of all, I would like to thank the panel for their contributions and I would like to conclude uh, with a word of caution on what we have said. Despite your relevant point that there's a great deal of continuity between the present administration and the previous one, and the point has been made very well indeed by, by Richard Haas in this, in this very readable piece. Yeah. However, however, the uncertainty of American domestic politics is a fact. And we do not know, we do not know what America will look like in 22 and in 24. And there may be a return of what we had before and what consequences that will have for the transatlantic relationship, for multilateralism, for relations with China, I'm sorry to say is at this point unpredictable. So uh, there is this uh, point, and it was made in an earlier, uh, uh, earlier discussion by Pierre Jacquet, there is always something unforeseen around in international politics, and it may happen again. But in any case, at this stage, I think uh, we can say that a new geopolitical structure is emerging. Uh, the Europeans are challenged to play a role in affecting this structure. Uh, and it poses enormous pressure on the Europeans themselves to get their house in order. And with that, I would like to thank the panel and close the session. Thank you very much.